Hi hey everyone, Bernard here and I hope you're all staying safe and well welcome to my latest Citizen Channel feature. Uh, please, if you are new to the channel, push that subscribe button and push the bell notifications as well so you know when these vlogs are coming out and uh, of course I do lots of stuff city past and city present so uh, please push that uh, notification button. Make sure your notification is set to public as well, don't forget below otherwise you won't get to know but uh, press that subscribe button please check out my links on screen as well for uh, facebook and twitter and also don't forget i've got a little film and tv channel on youtube as well so if you want to have a little break from football check that out and of course uh, on facebook and twitter i will check every few days and follow and friend everyone back on there and also don't forget i have a i have a sort of links with losing business on twitter they promote uh, city fan related small businesses local businesses which need our help perhaps more than ever these days don't they so please don't hesitate to get in touch with me if i can promote or put some stuff out for you in on one of my uh, magazine vlogs my city magazine vlogs and don't forget i'll always give a shout out to local local projects or charities etc etc just get in touch anyway please enjoy today's today's citizen channel feature thank you welcome welcome to part two of steve koppel managing city 32 days at moss side yes we we finished part one with city uh, dominating but uh, losing the game against top six side Wolverhampton Wanderers at Main Road. Uh, a Steve Bull, remember him? Great player. A late goal for him in the match, uh, sealing it for a, a Wolves victory. Of course, this was uh, Koppel's fourth game in charge. Uh, he'd actually, we talked about it, be given six uh, to judge. To judge what he needed, yeah. To judge what he needed to make City great again. Well, well, to make us a, a little bit better than mid-table anyway, so... That was his fourth game. Things weren't going fantastically, as I say. It was uh, obviously one win, one draw and a couple of defeats. Not great, but uh, yeah, just two. We didn't have much time to reflect on this game against Wolverhampton Wanderers. Just two days later after that defeat by Wolves, uh, we faced a trip to struggling South End. A lot of travelling in uh, Mr Coppel's reign all, all the way down south, wasn't there? Uh, yeah, South End United. And we go over to the Manchester Evening News. The headlines for this one was... Uh, Pathfinders, yeah, unusual title. Uh, Slick Blues find a way despite a few detours. And so we're looking at the opening paragraphs from Mr. Brian Brett in the Manchester Evening News. Uh, interesting one for this one. Uh, Manchester City got the points verdict that might just be the spark they need to rock it up the table. Hmm. Okay, Brian, yeah, he's always, always positive. Say, glass half full like, like the rest of us. I've probably, you know, probably not, to be honest with you. Yeah, the summary of the game. Did it all go well? Not particularly, no. A 3-2 win against Southend. So on the face of it sounds okay. Southend was struggling a little bit but again the score didn't really ref reflect the dominance of City we've been doing this we've been dominating games we're not really putting the ball in the old onion bag unfortunately and we missed plenty of chances although in all fairness as it as, as is the case in, in most even now even to this day the uh, opponent's goalkeeper had a bit of a worldie you know he played really well uh, the south end keeper was called uh, Paul Royce he had a great little game I mean, there's one change from just the Wolves game for this one and with uh, Simon Roger coming in. There you go. There's a name that uh, I'd forgotten about. Uh, nicknamed Jolly. I wonder why. Jolly Roger. Hey, well, not very, not very quick on the uptake in these days. Well, those days or these days. With a busy midfielder. Uh, he made his debut for the debut for the suspended Steve Lomas, of course, who'd uh, got himself a three-match suspension. Uh, in this game, Rossler finally ended his little bit of a drought. I think he'd gone six games without scoring. He made it 1-0 uh, just before half-time. Thanks to Kinky doing his usual. I think he took four four defenders out of the equation. So I had four defenders all around him and he sort of dinked it through, clipped it through to, to Rossler to put to uh, score the the goal to make it 1-0 for City. Uh, Kinky was having a bit of trouble. He was getting kicked all over the place, which was normal for Kinky. He got a lot, he got a lot of kicks at that level of football. He got a lot of kicks at higher, level, higher levels of football. Uh, he actually had to go off for treatment, uh, and it did take a while to get him back on again. It was, he was getting it a bit of stick. He even got booked. He even got booked for a little bit of retaliation. I mean, again, the referees. Not, not, I mean, if you're going to get kicked a bugger, come on, give, give him a bit of leeway, ref. I mean, he even got booked as well for retaliating at one stage because of all the kicks he was getting but there you go laws of the game i suppose 
but he added a goal on 58 minutes to Rossler's first and then a penalty on 72 minutes. Yeah, he was, yeah, he was okay at penalties, wasn't he? Which perhaps could do with him nowadays. So 3 0 up. There you go. 3 0 up with 18 minutes on the clock. Game over. Game over, surely. Yeah, yeah, but uh, what were the excuses? Well, perhaps the game 48 hours earlier was uh, was quite a hard one, a 500-mile round trip, perhaps. Uh, but uh, sadly, sadly, yes, uh, we did let Southend back into it. Um, it, wasn't, it wasn't terminal, obviously, but... Uh, this is City, isn't it? This is City. We know how to make the fans suffer and all those have obviously made that journey yet again down south. Uh, Dibble sort of let a sort of weak shot through his hands and it was uh, prodded in within a minute. So within a minute of being 3-0 up, it was 3-1. And uh, yeah, I'm not saying it was panic stations, but uh, yeah, the old... Uh, the old City fans would have probably thought, oh, God, here we go again. But, uh, yeah, on Sunday it was Steve Bull, of course, for Wolves, who was absolutely physically tormenting the City defence. And, uh, yeah, Southend had their own their own version. Yeah, a guy called, uh, well, nicknamed, uh, this wasn't his real name. His real name was Andy, but Rambo Ramel, he was nicknamed. Yeah, real name Andy Ramel, but uh, there you go. There's much better Rambo Ramel, that's quality and he sort of uh, was physically mauling our defence now at 3-1 and obviously starting to set a little bit of panic on 84 minutes uh, Dibble could only palm a Rambo shot unfortunately just he got a hand to it just inside the far post and it was 3-2 with 84 minutes uh, we did hang on and there was another five minutes injury time and the City fans were panicking just a little bit as, as we always do and just desperate to just just get that ball well in clear, you know, the shouts of just clear it, just put your foot through it, you know, that we used to get in the early days of Pep, but uh, we sort of calmed down after that, didn't we? But to the magnificent delight of the thousand City fans who made the trip down there, and to the relief and joy on the pitch as well. I mean, the, cele the players celebrated as though we'd won a cup final, which is probably what it felt like, uh, to be honest with you. And we, we as fans are happy with that. I say we didn't, you know, just, just to actually have a victory like that would, would have sustained us for a little while at least and we won't be getting any rubbish from... But we won't be getting... Of course we'll be getting rubbish. Always got rubbish from the United fans and people at our works or schools, etc. That was par for the course. But uh, at least we could go in with our heads held high for a change. Couple's verdict on the game back to the M M E N. It was a horrendous finish for anybody con connected with the club. But three 0 up with seventeen minutes to go, I thought this is going to be a comfortable victory, and then our big goalkeeper made a mistake which opened the door for them. Uh, we did sit back and we thought we had the game won. Ail allied to the fact that we had played forty eight hours early in what was a tiring game, and we had travelled quite a long way making all the excuses we did run out of steam and we lost our competitive edge then I think I should have made three substitutions I was thinking about it but they seemed to be going reasonably strong and I had trouble identifying who I wanted to bring off well you're the manager mate uh, Gio was the one I wanted to bring off to make a solid 4-4-2 but it became a horrendous last few minutes and Southend had opportunities to score but I think 3-3 would have been a disaster <laughs> it certainly would as it is 3-2 gets us the three points and that's what we came for but we still look vulnerable at the back yes uh, yeah, all through this it was a hint of obviously it wasn't just Dibble's fault but uh, we will see later he was obviously goalkeeping wise he certainly wasn't happy, happy with Dibble there uh, couple the player ratings that night uh, Dibble got six uh, yeah, I've noticed these ratings are quite kind. Uh, you know, even when we have bad games, it's very rarely anyone gets below a six. But uh, there you go. Dibble got a six. Whitley got seven. Frontchet six. Rogers seven. C Simons or Simmons. Simons will call it. And forgive me when I keep saying the other. The other, but I always, I always, I never say G G Jesus. Do I? Always, instead of Jesus, I always say Jesus. That's just me. My apologies. Wassel six. Some of his seven. Clough seven. Dickoff seven. Kinkladzi eight. Rossler seven. And the subs Ingram got five, Brown got five, and Cavalash Phillip wasn't used. And the ref C Wilkes he got a five as well. So again, not very high. Man of the match, of course, uh, Geo King Cladzi. So we'll get ready for that uh, next game in uh, Couples tenure. Yeah, he did continue his little purge of players. As I said, uh, he actually told keeper. This is a, this is again where obviously Dibble the Dibble. Uh, thing came into being with uh, Ike Immel, the other keeper of course who Dibble was preferred to, was told he was surplus to requirements so 
obviously a couple of thoughts perhaps of bringing another keeper on uh, not just to back up Dibble but perhaps take his place but as I said there'll be more on that in a minute uh, so obviously Mr Immel was told he is surplus to requirements I'm, sh I'm sure by Mr Coppel himself yeah but there was no rest for City uh, on our travels four days later we had to make, make the trip to Swindon Town there you go in the top six Victory at South End had put City back. back. We had nosebleeds, didn't we? We'd back up to 12th halfway. I think there's 24 teams in the division. We were halfway nosebleed time for the City fans and City themselves. Uh, Lomas, of course, was still suspended. But uh, new boy, Mr Jolly Roger, uh, kept his place. Simons dropped out and Jeff Whitley stepped in uh, for, for uh, Simons. Uh, this was game six, of course, in Coppel's reign by now. He had an idea, surely, of the task facing him. Well, I think we certainly know he wanted to get rid of Dibble. That's one thing he wanted to do. And uh, we weren't scoring many goals. So he must, he must have been looking at strikers, etc, etc. Uh, the headline... For this one, here we go. This one is six. Is six came in charge. Don't forget, away days spelt D A Z E. Couple faces a tough task. Well, it goes without saying, mate, doesn't it? Let's have a look at the opening paragraph by Mr. Brian Brett. Manchester City revealed the flip side of their disappointing first division record in an ugly brawl uh, that brought the curtain down on a performance that was been typical of the away day blues. Well, there you go. A bit of a summary. Yeah, the, the trouble soon uh, to come off the pitch, as we know, uh, ironically, was echoed on it with a, the scrappy game. Uh, there was a, a real big uh, fist fight. Uh, super middleweight himself, Nigel Clough. I mean, he couldn't knock the skin off her eyes. Pudding could have started it all, but it involved uh, all the players. It involved all the officials running from the, the uh, technical areas and uh, the benches, etc., etc. Uh, yeah, I mean, trying to stop it some got involved in it it was, it was absolute chaos uh, interestingly enough the ref uh, an ex-player uh, they started picking ex-players at refs in those days uh, as a sort of quick fast thing to get more referees into the game who knew the game uh, Steve Baines simply ran down the tunnel he legged it he legged it down the tunnel and left them to it yes <laughs> great ref uh, presumably he had a nice cup of tea and when it had all down, down, died down a little bit he returned and continued with the game there you go so uh, yeah brave lad big lad uh, obviously Steve Baines he, uh, <laughs> so anyway that, that's the version we get reading the, reading the uh, articles on the match anyway uh, perhaps I'm being a bit unfair to Steve Baines if you were there I wasn't there that night let me let me know if that's totally right but it sounds a bit dodgy to me when there was football uh City pretty much were under the cost certainly for the first 45 minutes and uh, super as I say Mr Mr Dibble who's coming to obviously Mr Coppel didn't really fancy it actually saved a penalty from a certain Kevin Horlock in this game uh, and they did some other really good saves as well to keep the scores level at half time but sadly we couldn't hang on for that the second half things went from bad to worse for City since Swindon strike at Wayne Allison certainly no Steve Bull or even Rambo Ramel uh, was given far too much room and dinked the ball over double on 51 minutes and uh, he would then go on to add a second on 83 minutes apart from Dibble the other 10 especially Kinky were not up for it today sometimes when Kinky wasn't when Kinky wasn't at the races City weren't really at the races a, a lot sort of revolved around what Kinky could do in those days uh, Coppel's verdict on the game a 2-0 win for Swindon obviously at City's expense I felt at half time we were in the more positive position with the win to our backs and I felt we would make a significant impact on the game unfortunately we did not have enough going and they scored with 10 minutes of the second half starting from then onwards we did not perform we got what we probably deserved nothing Andy Dibble made a couple of great saves but it reflects even worse on our performance if our goalkeeper saves a penalty and makes a couple of great saves and yet we still lose 2-0 you have to have strength at the bat. This was my sixth game, and we could still have to keep, and we still had to keep a clean sheet. Wasn't going to happen under your eh, mate. Uh, we have to work a lot harder on being tight at the back. That takes the pressure off. But when you are one 0 down, you can't play confident, relaxed football. It's an upset for us, as I thought we had had a bit of an upswing in our previous five games. But this was a real negative for us. We have to match opposition teams in every aspect of the game, and we were short in that department. There you go. So Coppel's verdict. 
on that defeat. The player ratings that day, yeah, Dibble got an 8, uh, Simon 6, McGoldrick 6, Wassel 6, Summerby 6, Whitley 5, Clough 5, King Kladsey 5, Roger 6, Rossler 7, Dickoff 6, the subs, Cavalash Philly got a 5, Frontcheck got a 5, and Brightwell wasn't used. The ref, Steve Baines, got a 4. I think that was very generous, giving him a 4. And the man of the match, as I think we've said, of course, was uh, Andy Dibble there for that one. So there you go, a very disappointing, very disappointed 2-0. 2-0 defeat. Uh, at least again, uh, we had a break. Uh, whether that's a good thing, they do say it's best to get up back on that horse, isn't it, and get another game under your belts. But uh, we did have a sort of 10, 11 day break before we would welcome mid table, mid table Oxford to Main Road on the 13th of November. That was the next match up for City. Uh, time for Koppel perhaps to go and have a word with Mr. Lee after his six games in charge and tell him what we needed or, or what, what perhaps he told him what he thought or perhaps he told him how he felt. Uh, there you go. But the time City kicked off against Oxford, Koppel's, Koppel's right hand man was in charge, Phil Neal. Um, he would be in the manager's seat, unfortunately. So what happened? What happened uh, in that in in that little meeting? What happened after that? Uh, well, suggest reports suggest again. Journalists at the time said he approached Lee with some ideas. Uh, Francis Lee looked at it and said, you're not getting it, uh, which is fair enough, uh, according to rumours. Uh, and it was all goalkeeping rumours. Uh, Watford's Kevin Miller was Koppel's first choice for a new keeper. I'd never heard of the, never heard of the bloke. Was deemed too expensive at £2 million. Don't forget we spent three hundred grand on Mr McGoldrick and that was probably too much. £2 million for a keeper, uh, as was a £1 million rated for Ian Ferrer at Luton. I mean, a £1 million for another. Um, another one, Mark Schwartz. Uh, Mark Schwartz approved a more realistic target, a quarter of a million. But after spending a week at City, he opted for Bradford. That just about says it all, doesn't it, unfortunately? But perhaps this was possibly the tip of the iceberg. Surely it wasn't just a keeper we were missing. Oh, obviously, when Mr Koppel came up with his you know, big long list of what he wanted, I'm sure Francis Lee just, just looked at him and smiled and said it's, it's not doable. Perhaps Lee thought that Koppel could work a minor miracle with what we already had. Who knows? I mean, that's, that's all I can think that happened. We weren't there. We weren't flies on the wall. But in, in the six games in charge... He couldn't do that. He, he couldn't get any more out of the play. It was, was going to carry on, wasn't it? It was going to be the same sort of thing. Win one, lose one, draw one, lose one, lose another one, etc, etc. Uh, so there you go. He couldn't. I don't think Mr Lee was willing to give him any more cash. Couple, of course, would be fur it would be further known to him that there was trouble because City would allow uh, uh, announce a record loss of three million pounds for the year after a small profit the year before, uh, and there's no doubt Lee had already mentioned this when and Couple came. You know, I mean, it doesn't matter the fact that he joined the club and may have been promised certain things. At the end of the day, perhaps uh, Mr. Lee turned back, and looked at looked at the figures, looked at the bank statement, and thought, no, we can't really do much with this, Mr. Couple. And as I said, I think I mentioned early on in part one Koppel was a guy uh, sometimes yeah his chairman sometimes backed him he wasn't one for getting little little quality loan deals and stuff like that he, he sort of uh, knew the players he wanted and obviously he, they, they cost money they weren't cheap and as soon as Koppel wasn't allowed to spend or buy what he wanted then there was going to be serious doubts about his future at this club no matter how, how what length of time he'd been there because that's just how in his other clubs that Koppel had managed that's just how he, how he worked you know he said if he, if he wasn't backed he, he sort of did what he sort of did one he wasn't very happy so he quickly must have decided, obviously with that meeting, that enough was enough. By November the 5th, uh, Koppel was off work, uh, apparently suffering from flu. Uh, by November the 6th, Ike Immel, yeah, the guy who told his surplus to requirements has actually been told... Uh, that he's not surplus to requirements anymore. I'm not sure. I'm not sure who told him because I don't think Mr. Koppel was around. On November the seventh, yeah, a rumor, a rumor spreads around main road that something big is about to happen so what what is it what a sign in are we going to sign are we going to sign a fantastic player sadly it's uh the links are that rossler may be going to sunderland uh niall quinn's picked up an injury playing for sunderland and they want uve rossler that was that was probably depressing in itself wasn't it but on 8th of November, yes, the rumours were true. Uh, no, it wasn't a new player signing. It wasn't any player leaving us. It was, well, 
Mr. Koppel is going. He's a, a, a dumb one. Uh, even more shock was Koppel's uh, assistant, Phil Neal, although he did step into his shoes, didn't he? He just came to us in training and said, you take the first team, I'm going. Uh, Neil said, I just looked at him and said, what? It was a bolt out of the blue and he didn't explain his decision at all. Sparked by, of course, by Koppel's physical appearance at his final press conference, uh, one which shocked the assembled reporters, included Blue Moon Rising and BBC GMR journalists Andy Buckley and Richard Burgess. They gave a first-hand account of his physical deterioration. Koppel looked pale and gaunt. So, well, he had flu, he probably would do. Uh, twitched nervously as he sat down next to his chairman, glancing up just briefly. He barely paused as he read out a pre-prepared statement, word for word. In in all fairness, he wasn't the first. Like, face it, he wasn't the first to sit next to Swells and look ill and switch. He was ill. I wouldn't hold that against him. Paul Hins again. Paul Hins, the former City player turned reporter. He went even further. He said Koppel looked physically ill, really ill. He had lost a great deal of weight in a short time, and I'm talking about a pound. I'm not talking about a pound or two. He looked almost skeletal. Very bad, very scary. Uh, they were told, the journalists were told that there was no point asking a question because it wouldn't be answered and that coupled with how, how, how ill he looked, what was led to rumours there was something seriously wrong with him. His statement that day, his statement that he simply made, uh, Koppel, I'm not ashamed to admit that I have suffered for some time from huge pressure. I have, I have imposed upon myself and since my appointment this has completely overwhelmed me to such an extent that I cannot function in the job in the way that I would like to. As this situation is affecting my well-being, I have asked Francis Lee to relieve me of my obligation to manage the club. And there it was. Uh, after about 32 days-ish or so, uh, and just six games, Koppel was off. Was off on his bike, off. Under Koppel, we'd moved, uh, we started at 14th and we finished at 17th. So not much of an improvement. Uh, well, not an improvement. Uh, played six, won two, drawn one, lost three, scored seven and against ten. No clean sheets, of course, we know that. Of course, City would have five managers that season, not just permanent, but caretakers as well. Uh, of course, after Koppel, uh, Neil, Neil stepped into the breach. He, he didn't go with his boss. He was asked to take over. And he was quite happy to do it. Uh, and obviously, he took charge to the end of December. So he, he, lasted, he, he lasted longer than Koppel, obviously. Uh, when another City saviour, City manager saviour came in, didn't he? And a, a guy called Frank Clark would come to... to to oh, to to save City he would charge into save City. Well, perhaps not. Um, yeah, first Phil Neal's first game in charge at Main Road in front of just twenty three thousand and seventy nine. The headlines. This is this Oxford game. Don't forget. We'll have a quick look at that because it's Phil Neal, isn't it? We won't look at Neal's verdict, but uh, the headlines for that first game in charge for Phil Neal. The crowd had just twenty three thousand and seventy nine, so about five thousand down on what they'd been getting. Uh, some of us have had enough, to be honest with you. Uh, the headlines, rock bottom, nightmare as fans walk out on City. There you go, you've even got fans on the pitch uh, remonstrating with players, etc. And police on the pitch, etc, etc. Of course, it ended up Manchester City 2, Oxford 3. So not the greatest start for Mr Phil Neal. And Brian Brett's opening paragraph for this one. Manchester City drained the last vestiges of support from football's loyalist fans with a wretched performance that was an insult to Main Road. Can't really say it much clearer than that, can you? Of course, Koppel's health improved. Uh, I think City actually offered, I think Swales actually offered him 30 grand, actually. Felt sorry for him. Uh, Koppel refused it because he said he didn't deserve it, which is all credit to Koppel. No, nothing wrong with that. And all credit for Swales for offering it. He, he uh, didn't have to. He'd resigned. There's no, no uh, agreement to pay off a contract or anything like that. Um, of course, his health did improve. Uh, he would manage again for over 20 odd years after that, including back at Palace and, of course, uh, quite successfully again, or reasonably successfully at Red. Uh, I think he was at Brentford as well and as I say he was involved for another 20 years plus as both as a manager and a, a director of football so as a di director as well at various places various clubs in the UK and abroad uh, so it's certainly 
it certainly wasn't uh, a life dilabating whatever the word is it wasn't a life threatening illness was it that's for sure it was it was just probably cityitis unfortunately which which you got which we've all we've all had but we we get over it don't we we, we work through it uh, as for city of course post couple as i said neil didn't get off to the greatest start did he but uh, of course the fun ride would continue, wouldn't it, for us fans? Uh, our initial misgivings about Koppel that I mentioned earlier, I mean, it's not a hindsight thing, were, were sadly proved correct. And with such legends as Frank Clark to come in, it was no wonder that uh, soon we'd plummet. Uh, yes, rather, th rather than be put on firm ground and work our way back up to the top division, uh, we would firstly plummet, wouldn't we, to the third tier of English football. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for joining me for this two-part special on this part two. Uh, Managing City, Steve Koppel, 32 days at Moss Side. Let me know your thoughts anyway and uh, memories of that time. Great, great days. I know, horrible days, but it's what life's all about, supporting City. Anyway, thanks for watching. What are you going to do with us today? Have a great one. Look after yourselves, look after your friends, look after your family. More importantly, let's all look after each other. Till we meet here again on the Citizen channel, or perhaps have a flit across, have a look at my film and TV channel. I only ever ask one thing of you. We all need to do this, please. Stay safe, Blues. Come on, City. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.